Okay, now we are looking at this, still in the part, systems of linear equations, but in the particular parts that is about linear transformations, which is on page 10. So, here, definition. We say a transformation T from B to W between two vector spaces is a linear transformation if it satisfies the following two conditions. Then those conditions are given. Well, so transformation, what's that? Transformation is just another word for function or map. So we have this T is a map, a function from V to W. So just as earlier in this course we've written, you know, you have a function from reals to reals. Okay, that's how you write a function from reals to reals. A function takes a real number as an input and gives you a real number as an output. So T is a, is a function that takes a vector in V as an input. So it takes an element of V as an input and gives you double, something in W, a vector in W, and that vector space as an output. So V and W are the two vector spaces. Inside them are vectors. T takes something from inside V and gives you something inside W, right? So it's a transformation, a map, a function. Now we say that such a transformation is a linear transformation if it satisfies these two extra conditions, right? So it's a function, but then it has two extra conditions on it. They are that T of U plus V is equal to T of U plus T V. You can, you, can, this, you can say that what it's doing is doing basically is it's respecting the vector addition, right? When there's a vectors added in here, when there's vectors added in V, and then you transform them, it's the same as if you transform them individually and then add them. It respects the vector addition. Uh, another word for it is it preserves the vector addition. Okay? If you want to think of it visually, you can think of it like this. You have, we have a vector u, ah, sorry, we have a vector space v, we have a vector space w, and inside v and w we have vectors. So inside v we have this vector u maybe, and we have this vector v. We add them together and we get another vector, u plus v. Okay. Now a map from u to v, just any odd map, which I'll call um, a map. Let's call this map. This is now it's not really a transformation. This is just a map. It's a function. It's a transformation called f. Such a thing would take, it would take u, the vector u, and it would give you a new vector in w. Maybe it would give you the vector f u, right? And it would give you, for v, it would give you the vector f v, right? Some vector fv. And u plus v in v, that's itself a vector. So fu, so f of u plus v is also a vector, right? But there's no particular reason why adding fu to fv should give you f of u plus v, right? It doesn't have to do that. But if we say no, we're not talking about any function f, we're not just talking about any transformation, we're talking about a linear transformation t, okay? Then, once we found out, oh, then, once we found out what t u is and what t v is, then actually what T of u plus v is, is given, it's specified, it's determined, because it's got to be the same as T of u plus T of v, right? You take two vectors, u and v, you add them together in v, you transform it, you get T of u plus v. Or you take your vectors, u and v, you transform them to get T of u and T of v, and then you add them, in W to get TU plus TV. Now, both of those directions, both of those methods must give you the same results if T is a linear transformation. Okay. This means, as like I said, this can be thought of as, this can be thought of as T respects or preserves vector addition, right? There's another condition, of course, because a vector space comes with two conditions, closed under addition, closed under scalar multiplication. So there'll be a, for, for, for the linear transformation, there'll be a condition about vector addition, and now there's a condition about scalar multiplication. It's got to respect scalar multiplication. It's got to preserve scalar multiplication. So again, 
you have a vector space. Oh, sorry, we might put it there. You have a vector space v, a vector space w, right? You take a vector u. Don't want to draw it too long. You take a vector u that's in v. You multiply it by a scalar alpha, so now it becomes a stretched version of itself. I mean, you can mentally think of it like that. That's literally what it is for R3 and R2. You can't picture it for R4 or Rn in general. You can't picture it for function spaces. But when you're just thinking about things, you can make this rough picture in your head. Okay? Uh, the same thing as me drawing these vector spaces as like circles. Vector spaces are never like circles like this. This is just an abstract picture of this, this set. Okay. You know, the vector space, you know, ones, ones we know about, you know about already, I mean, there's, there are, there are planes like R2 or huge three-dimensional spaces like R3. They're not confined circles, but I'm just drawing the circles to represent figuratively what's going on. Anyway, you take this vector u, you put multiplied by alpha to get alpha u, then you transform it, right, to get t. Oops, you, to, get, to get t of alpha u. Okay, now that, if this transformation t is linear, that must be the same thing, give you the same result as if you take the vector u, transform it to get yourself t u, and then multiply it by alpha to get alpha t u, right? When that happens, then we say that t preserves or respects scalar multiplication. And when both of these things are true, when it preserves or respects scalar multiplication and vector addition, then it's called a linear transformation. Okay. Now, here's a really important thing. Every linear transformation from R, every linear transformation from Rn to Rm can be represented by an M by N matrix. And every M by N matrix corresponds to a linear transformation between Rn and Rm. So I just talked abstractly about linear transformations as being things that satisfy these two, these two conditions, right? But now we have something concrete that, at least in the case where your vector spaces are Rn and Rm, the linear transformation can be thought of as a matrix, okay? So I think I'm going to leave that for the next video.